In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the information on pages Word 80 and 81, which is entitled Create Sections and Columns. Dividing a document into sections allows you to format each section of the document with different page layout settings. Now, a section is a portion of a document that is separated from the rest of the document by section breaks. And of course, section breaks are formatting marks that you insert in a document to show the end of a section. And that's why we're going to have to be using our Show Hide button on here as well, which of course, once again, is on our Home tab uh, on there. And of course, it's the little paragraph mark here that's our Show Hide. Uh, that's going to show us where the section breaks are actually located at. Now, once you have divided a document into sections, you can format each section with different columns, margins, page orientations, headers and footers, and other page layout settings. Now, by default, a document is a single, as formatted as a single section. But you can divide a document into as many sections as you like. So every page can have be a different section, or even pages can have multiple sections. Uh, on there and it's a great way of making sure that your document is going to really work for you and that uh, it looks exactly how you want it to do. So if we take a look on step one on the page, uh, top of page Word 80, it's going to tell us that we want to right click our status bar. So down here's our status bar and we just want to get to a blank area and right click on it. And of course this brings up the customized status bar menu uh, on here. And what we want to do is we want to click on this section button here. Uh, so we're, if we're, uh, of course that's if it's not already checked, which mine is not already checked. So I'm going to click on this and you'll now notice that here it says section and it tells me this is section one. Once we have that done, we're just going to click somewhere uh, in a blank area and that's going to close down that uh, customized status bar menu. Now the status bar indicates that the insertion point is located in section one of the document, which we mentioned just a second ago. Now, of course, you can use the customized status bar menu to turn on and off uh, the display of formatting, uh, or excuse me, of information in the status bar. So there's a lot of different options that you can use on here. Uh, so you can take a look and use this to your advantage on uh, formatting your documents. Step two tells us that we do want to make sure that we click on our home uh, tab. And we are going to click on the Show Hide button, which we talked about uh, just a moment ago, which is going to turn on the formatting marks for your document. Step 3 tells us that we want to place the insertion point before the heading, General Considerations. So we see here that there's the General Considerations, and we want to place our insertion point right before those words. And of course, after we do that, we're going to click on our Page Layout tab. And we're going to click on the Breaks button in the Page Setup group. Now there are some different breaks here, and uh, if you take a look on the bottom of page Word 80, uh, it talks about a few of the different type of section breaks that we have. Uh, we do have the next page, which is going to begin a new section and move the text following the break to the next page uh, on there, and that's our next page. So you see on there, it gives you the screen tip of inserts a section break and starts the new section on the next page. There's also a continuous break, which is right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to begin the new section on the same page uh, at the insertion point. Then, of course, we also have an even page section break, which is, is going to begin a new section and move the text following the break to the top of the next even number page. And then finally, we have an odd page section break, which is going to begin the section uh, and move the text following the break to the top of the next odd number page. And of course, this is especially if you're wanting to use these, uh, uh, maybe if you have like an illustration on the odd number pages or the even number pages and you want to move the text to the next page, uh, that's where those uh, even page and odd pages really come into play at. But what we're going to do is, is that once we have this, of course, this is what we call the page breaks menu. And that opens up and this is where we're going to insert in our different type of breaks. We're going to click now on the continuous break. When we click on that, you'll notice that here appears a line where it tells us that it's a section break and it's a continuous section break. And that's where Word insert that continuous section break. And it's always shown as a dotted double line. And of course, in this case, it's going to be above our heading. Now, when you insert a section break at the beginning of a paragraph, Word inserts the break at the end of the previous paragraph. Now, the section break stores the formatting information for the previous section. 
The document now has two sections, which if you take a look down on our status bar, it tells us here that we are now in section two. So everything from here up is section one, and everything from underneath this double line is section two. Now, of course, a section break stores the formatting information for the preceding section. So the formatting that is up here is going to be the same formatting that's down here for right now. Now, when we make changes down here, you'll notice that up here, this will not be changed when we start making our section breaks, uh, our changes inside of this section break. Now step five tells us that we're going to click on the columns button. And of course this is going, uh, when you click on the columns button, it's going to have some different types of columns that we have available. And this is going to allow us to take the information that's in section two, and we're going to format this into a column. And of course you use this menu to format the text using preset column formats, or you can also go down here to the more columns. And that's the button that we're going to click in step six, where it tells us to click the more columns button and that's going to open up the Columns dialog box. Step 7 tells us that we're going to select two. So we are going to have this as a two-column document. Uh, everything in Section 2, I should say. Now, what we're going to also do as well is we're going to change the spacing a little bit. And it tells us that right now the spacing is at half an inch. And we're going to click the Spacing Down arrow, and we're going to make this at three-tenths of an inch. Then once we have that, we're going to click on OK, and you'll now notice at the top of the document here, everything in Section 1 is still one column. It's uh, the same information. Now, everything in Section 2 has now been formatted uh, into two different columns. And so you can see that we've uh, fit some different, uh, you know, the information on the pages are the same, but it's presented in a different way. You'll also notice as well, we have recently gotten rid of one page. So just because we formatted most of the document as two columns, we've gotten rid of the five pages that we did have, and now we have not even quite four and a half pages of information. So using columns as a way to fit more information or more text uh, in a document. Now, of course, this is in two columns of equal width. Now the spacing between here, that's the one that we changed to three tenths on there. Um, so that's why we changed that spacing between so we can fit even more text onto our document. Now formatting text in columns, like I said, is another way to increase the amount of text that fits in on the page. Of course, we can click on our view tab now. We want to take a look at what we've done and we're going to click on the multiple pages. And of course, as we said before, notice that uh, we've reduced down the number of pages from five to four. Uh, and it's not even four full pages uh, on there as well. Of course, once you've examined all four pages and you've taken a look at this, you can press your control home key and notice that that'll take you back up to the top of the document and which is also, that is in section one uh, on there as well. Now, of course, the text in the columns flow automatically from the bottom of one column to the top of the next column. So uh, once you hit down to this section right here and it reaches down to the bottom of the column, it starts again up at the next column. Once it reaches the bottom of the column here, it's going to go to the next page, top of the column. Now, of course, when you delete a section break, you delete the section formatting of the text before the break. Now the te that text becomes part of the following section and it assumes the formatting of that section. So if we would delete the section break right here, this would remove the two column information that we had and would remove and take it back to the one column. Now of course if you're wanting to change page layout settings for a section, and of course ultimately we're talking about dividing a document into sections allows you to vary that layout of a document. In addition to applying different column settings to sections, you can apply different margins, page orientations, paper size, vertical alignment, headers and footers, page numbering, footnotes, endnotes, and other page layout settings. For example, if you are formatting a report that includes a table with many columns, you may want to change the uh, table's page orientation to landscape so that it's easier to read. Now to do this, you insert a section break before and after the table to create the section that contains only the table. Then you would change the page orientation of the section that contains this table to landscape. 
Now if the table doesn't fill the page, you can also change the vertical alignment of the table so that it's centered vertically on the page. And of course to do this, you would use the vertical alignment list uh, arrow on the layout tab of the page section dialog box. To check or change the page layout settings for an individual section, you just place the insertion point in that section. So if we were going to make changes right now where our insertion point is up here in section 1, it's only going to make changes to this here. If I would place my insertion point down here, then it would change the remaining part of the document, which is in section 2. Of course, once you, uh, when you select this, uh, on uh, the section, that's where you're going to be making your changes. Now this section in the apply to list box, uh, the settings are applied to the current section only. When you select this point forward uh, on there, this is when you're working uh, inside the page setup dialog box, uh, you're applying to the current section and all sections that follow it. So you'll just need to uh, play around with those options just to see what you can do. Now if you select a whole document when you're working with your page uh, uh, set up dialog box, then it's going to be applied to all the sections in the document. And of course you use the apply to list arrow in the columns dialog box or the footnotes and endnotes dialog box to change those settings for a section as well. And that concludes the information that's on pages Word 80 and 81, which is uh, talk at, uh, which we talked about uh, creating sections and columns. In our next video, we're going to be talking about inserting page breaks.